my strength, my song, this cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are... Today we have Thursday formation evening. And you know that some days ago I was walking along the trail, the loop, and then riding my bicycle, and I met um, some parishioners, and one of them asked me, Father, uh, does it has this pandemic crisis, has anything to do with the book of the Revelations? Uh, is it in the Bible? How can we interpret what's happening now in the light of the Word of God? And then I read in the newspaper about some Christians that have associated this uh, pandemic with the fourth horse of the apocalypse. And in the newspaper, I, I, I read Daily Express and some other newspapers, they said, oh, th this is absolutely bizarre. Is it? What I truly know is that everything that happened personally and as a society has an explanation in the Bible. God has something to tell us. God has a message in everything we live because we are believers. I'm addressing this speech, this formation evening to believers. So, does it, is it bizarre as the newspapers claimed? Does God have something, does God have something to tell us? Of course, He does. Everything that happened in our lives has to be interpreted according to the book of the Bible. And God has a special message for us. God is telling us something through our, uh, whatever happens in our life, as an individual and as a society. I truly believe that the Word of God is alive and active. That is Hebrews 4.12. For the Word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged edge sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thought and attitudes of the heart. So the Word of God is alive, active, sharper than any double-edged sword, penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart, of the heart of a human being and the heart of a society. God has something to tell us through this pandemic. And the book of Revelation is Word of God and we read it in liturgy in churches. The Second Vatican Council tells us that in the Constitution, Gaudium and Spet, and that we need to interpret the sign of the times, the sign of the times. 
We need to interpret, to understand, because God is speaking to us. Gaudium et spes, Second Vatican Council. In the light of what is the word of God, and Gaudium et spes, spes to interpret, understand the sign of the times, we can go forth to, to this uh, and I want you to go through chapter 6 of Revelation and we will read together because Revelation is an apocalyptic prophecy addressed to the seven churches in the Roman province of Asia. Apocalypse means the revealing of divine mysteries. And John is to write down what is revealed, what he sees in his vision, and send it to the seven churches. What is the purpose of the book of Revelations? The purpose is to prepare and threaten the Christian of the Roman province of Asia, Asia Minor, as addressed in the letters to the seven churches, so that they will remain faithful against the impending persecution. The book of Revelation is meant to give up courage, strength, and also purpose, meaning in the midst of tribulation, in the midst of suffering, is not to, is not a threat, is not a, for us to be fearful and see the punishment of God, not at all. The purpose of the book of Revelation is to give us courage, strength, faithfulness in the midst of tribulation, hardships, in this, uh, it was addressed for those Christians who were suffering martyrdom, persecution, and dying for the message. But to any generation, the book of Revelation is meant to give purpose to any suffering, to give a courage, strength. And I'm sure that the book of Revelation now will give us courage, strength, purpose, in the midst of this pandemic. We read together this chapter 6. In chapter 6 of Revelation, we see the Lamb is the one worthy to open the scroll. The Lamb has gone to the one who sits on the throne and has taken the scroll from his hand. All of creation is praising the Lamb because the Lamb is worthy. This is the main theme in chapter 6. The Lamb is worthy to be praised. Now the scroll is about to be opened, one seal at a time. The first five chapters of Revelation have been in preparation of the unveiling of this concealed scroll. Chapter 6 begins to reveal the things which must soon take place. That is what we read in chapter 1, verse 1. Things must soon take place. 
The Lamb is the one worthy to open the scroll. The first seal is chapter 6, 1 to 2. The Lamb opens the first seal. When the seal is opened, one of the four living creatures said with a voice that sounded like thunder, Come. The first seal reveals a white horse. On the white horse was a rider holding a bow. A crown was given to the rider, and he came out, conquering and to conquer. A bow and a crown. The crown means authority. Authority was given. The first four seals reveal what has been commonly called the four horsemen of the Apocalypse. Uh, we read about these horses and riders in many books of the Old Testament and the link with the other Gospels. Uh, we read about these horses in Zechariah, all over the book of Zechariah, but especially chapter 1, verses 7 to 11. In the book of Jeremiah, especially in 49.36. In the book of Daniel, especially 11.4. In the book of Zechariah, again, chapter 2.6. And also Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24.31. Uh, and the book of Revelation, obviously. The second seal is in Revelation 6, chapter 6, verses 3 to 4. The Lamb opens the second seal, and the second living creature also says, Come. The opened seal reveals a bright red horse. Its rider was given authority to take peace from the earth so that people would kill one another. Christ has unleashed the removal of peace and the bringing of war. This is the second uh, seal. The third seal is in chapter 6, 5, 6. The Lamb opens the third seal and the living creature announces, Come. The third seal reveals a black horse and the rider had a pair of scales in his hand. The scales picture of rationing of food. Christ has unleashed famine, hunger on the inhabitants. The fourth seal is in chapter 6, verses 7 and 8. When the Lamb opened the fourth seal, the fourth living creature also said, Come. The opened seal reveals a pale horse whose rider was named Death. Hades followed Death. They were given authority over the fourth of the earth to kill with sore, to kill with famine, to kill with pestilence, plagues and to kill by wild beasts. Death and Hades are given four tools to use to kill. Here is a place that we need to remember that these numbers of people dying are symbolic. 
the prophecy is not that only a smaller fraction of people will be killed, but not all. We cannot stick to numbers. The numbers in the Bible are symbolic. The message is, when it said, uh, they will be given authority over the fourth of the earth to kill with sword, with knife, with famine, with pestilence, and wild beasts. We cannot now make a calculation how many people will die. A fourth means so many people. No, don't do that. The Bible uh, is not a newspaper. Give a clue to understand what's happening, but it's symbolic, metaphoric. It means, a fourth means not all, a fraction of people, but not all, a smaller fraction. These four tools for death are also common tools for God's judgment. We found this for tools of death in the book of Ezekiel, uh, the same language that we have here. Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 21. For thus says the Lord, How much more when I send upon Jerusalem my four disastrous acts of judgment sword, farming, wild beasts, and pestilence, plagues, to cut off from it man and beast. Jeremiah as well, the same. So, let me see where it follows. Here it is. There is a reason that these tools of death were used against Jerusalem. God promised in the early days of the nation of Israel that it would be the way God would destroy Jerusalem. It is in Leviticus 26, 18 to 33. And if in spite of this you will not listen to me, then I will discipline you again sevenfold of your sins, and I will break the pride of your power, and I will make your heavens like iron and your earth like bronze, and your strength shall be spent in vain. For your land shall not yield it increase, and the trees of the land shall not yield their fruit. Then if you walk contrary to me, and will not listen to me, I will continue striking you sevenfold of your sins, and I will let loose the wild beast against you, which shall bereave you of your children and destroy your livestock and make you few in number so that your roads shall be deserted. Your road shall be deserted. And in verse 23 of Leviticus 20, chapter 26 verse 23 and if by this discipline you are not turned to me and walk contrary to me, then I will walk contrary to you, and I myself will strike you sevenfold of your sins, and I will bring a sword upon you. The first for seals are also in Matthew chapter 
24. One point worthy of our consideration is the parallel between Matthew chapter 24 and the events of the first four seals. As Jesus predicts the destruction of Jerusalem, notice the parallels between Matthew chapter 24, verses 6 to 11, and Revelation chapter 6, verses 1 to 8. Wars are predicted. 24, 6. Kingdoms and nations attacking and conquering. 24, 7. Famines and earthquakes, 24-7. And being put to death, 24-9. This connection between Matthew 24 and Revelation 6 are also noted by scholars. The seals closely parallel the signs of the approaching end of times spoken in Jesus. The equation of the seals with Matthew is correct. This is what the scholars are saying. The similarities are so close that some venture to call that discourse the main source of the seal judgment. But the context corresponds very closely to the eschatological discourse of Jesus in Luke. I will leave you to make your own judgment about the connection between Matthew chapter 24, Mark chapter 13, and Luke chapter 21 with Revelation 6. Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21 are parallel accounts referring to the coming judgment and destruction, destruction of Jerusalem that happened in the year 70 after Christ. And you can compare Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke chapter 21, verse 20. Therefore, if Revelation 6 is referring to the same events as Matthew 24, and obviously Mark 13 and Luke 21, then the first four seals are describing the destruction of Jerusalem. And this would fit with what we previously noted. And this destruction of Jerusalem happened in the year 70 after Christ. As a first conclusion, what can we say? The seals are revealing God's judgment on the earth. We have not been expi explicitly told who the judgment are against. These judgments are pictures as affecting many. Wars, famine, death, and plagues. We are given an overview of the coming judgment. Once all the seals are opened, more details about this judgment will be revealed. And these are chapter 8 to chapter 11 of the book of Apocalypse. This is a first introduction. And I come back again to what I said in the beginning. The Word of God is telling us how to interpret everything that happens in our life personally and as a society. And in the light of Vatican Council, Second Vatican Council Constitution, Gaudium et Spes, we need to discern, we need to read 
the sign of the times and interpret it with the will of God. And this is a call to conversion. Perhaps we cannot make the whole world repent and turn to God. But you and me can do it. I can turn to God and repent from all my sins. And you can do the same. What happens with the rest is not up to us to judge. But you and me can do it. We can make, and perhaps God relents and stops the virus. If we read on Genesis 18, chapter 18, verses 16 to 33, Abraham pleads so that God will stop the destruction of Sodom. Abraham, the man who bargained with God. In the end, God destroyed the city, the society, because he could not find more than ten just and holy people not to destroy the society. So, God agrees that he will not destroy the cities if he finds 50 righteousness, righteous people. And Abraham then asks for the city to be spared if there are but 45 And he humbly states, Behold, I have taken upon myself to speak to the Lord, I who am but dust and ashes. God agrees to spare for forty-five rages, and Abraham asked to spare for forty. God agrees. And Abraham, Abraham pleads again and again. The Lord said, if I find ten, for the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. And then he said, May the Lord not be angry, but let me speak just once more. If only ten can be found there. And he answered, For the sake of them, I will not destroy it. And my question is, why did Abraham stop there? Why did Abraham stop at them? Abraham stopped at them because by the time of that last appeal, he was totally convinced that the Lord had given full consideration for his concern for his family and that any of them who would be saved could be saved. So, for the sake of you, for the sake of me, for the sake of all who want to engage in this campaign of turning to God and repentance, we can do a lot to stop the spreading of this coronavirus. But you can say, well, Father, this, this, this is the Old Testament. Yes, you are right. This is the Old Testament. But the Apocalypse is the New Testament. And the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, and Luke are the New Testament. And Jesus said to the woman caught, caught in adultery, No one has condemned you, neither do I, neither has I. I won't either. 
but sing no more, or something worse will happen to you. I put myself in the shoes of those who are struggling with coronavirus at this very moment, and those who have lost a beloved one who died of coronavirus. And you may ask me, why me? What have I done to deserve this? It is not because of you. It is not because of your sins, but because of the sinfulness of our society. It is because the lack of faith of our society. It is because of the sinfulness of our society that we need to repent, to turn to God and to do penance and pray. Isn't that the message of all the apparitions of the Virgin Mary? Isn't that the message of Fatima? Think what happened in the two world wars. Think what happened in the Cold War. But it's still on. How many times God has sent his angels, his messengers, the Virgin Mary with so many apparitions, with a message of repentance, with a message of prayer, with a message of turning to God. What have we done as a society with so many messengers that God has sent to us? And now I'm not talking about you and me. If you are affected by coronavirus, or you are mourning and grieving one beloved one who have already died of coronavirus, it's not for your sins. It's not for his or her sins. These disasters, these hardships, these tragedies, doesn't happen because you are a sinner, I am a sinner. But as a society, and you and me, nobody deserves that. But as a society, we need, we need to do penance, we need to pray, we need to repent, we need to turn to God. And this is the message. It's a call to prayer. It's a call to conversion. It's not bizarre, as some of the newspapers have said. It's not bizarre. It's not alarming. It's not threatening. It's just a call to prayer, a call to conversion, a call to turn to God. And the book of the Apocalypse is to give us courage, strength, in the midst of trials, in the midst of hardship. And this is aim to raise our faith, to give courage, to give comfort for those who are mourning and grieving the loss of a beloved one. You don't deserve, nobody deserves that. But all as a society, the need to engage, embrace a campaign of prayer, a campaign of repentance, a campaign of penance. But there is a message of hope that comes next. And now, with this introduction, we will read together chapter 6 of the Apocalypse. 
I said, I make a pause, and the last thing I said before is this is a message of hope. The pandemic in the light of Revelation chapter 6. Uh, the risen Lord left us a great gift after his resurrection. And the gift is peace. The peace be with you. Peace be with you. The peace of the risen Lord. Peace is the gift that the risen Lord has left us. The word of God is always real and gives sense, meaning, of everything we live, our joys, our sorrows, our pains. Revelation chapter 6, verse 8. Who speaks? It's St. John who speaks. This is the word of the Lord. I only reflect on God's word. They were given authority over a fourth of the earth. Because of the pandemic, some people may think that because of so many deaths, we are leaving this verse 8 of chapter 6 of Revelation. Others may think that this is Revelation 6 has been already fulfilled many times through history. The pale green horse whose rider is death and who hung around the earth has already been before so many times. How many plagues? Coronavirus is not the first. There will be a complete fulfillment of this prophecy at the end of the age. But during our history, here has been partially fulfilled this prophecy this fourth horse horseman or rider of the apocalypse can we interpret and this is the question this chapter 6 verse 8 of the apocalypse as what's happening now in this pandemic, or is it bizarre, as some newspaper have claimed? This is a teaching given by God to St. John for every time and for all the times. Revelation is a book from God to us for every generation. The fourth horse whose rider is death. They were given authority to kill with sword, famine, and pestilence. That is plague. They cannot do anything if God doesn't allow them. It is Christ who commands. It is Christ who decrees. Is it Christ who allows? Isn't Christ the King of kings? Isn't Christ the Lord, the ruler, the one who commands? There may be some people who doesn't like this. But this is the word of God proclaimed in church in the liturgy. Revelation Chapter 6, verse 1. And I saw, who saw? John, John the Evangelist. And I saw that the Lamb had opened one of the seven seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying, as with the voice of thunder, Come, 
though unseen. I saw, I saw the Lamb open one of the seven seals. It is only the Lamb who has authority, who is worthy to open the seals. Come, and disasters strike. And then he will open another seal and another disaster strike again. There are people who don't like to see our Lord like this. Opening seal saying, come to disasters. An alternative is thinking that all the disaster of the world occurred with no control from God, that God has no control Jesus has no authority or control over everything wrong that happens to us. In that case, Jesus is not the Lord if he is not under control. The one who commands and allows. In Romans chapter 8 verse 28 we read, We know that all things work together for good. Ah, that is the Lord. All things work together for good. God has the power to turn everything that at first sight seems bad turned into good. For those who loved God and St. Augustine added to this Roman 8.28 Ansia peccata even Sin, also sin, also disasters, can work for our good. How can it be like that? Because God has authority, because the Lamb is worthy, because if we turn to God, He can turn our evil into good. Hasn't He destroyed death? Hasn't he destroyed sin? He can turn everything that at first sight is bad, evil, into something good for us. Because he loves us. Thanks to God that this is true. Thanks to God that Jesus is the Lamb who is worthy. Thanks to God that Jesus has the power and authority. Because in this way, as Jesus is the Lord, and he takes full command and control of this and every situation, in this way, with his merciful heart, he limits all suffering, death, and pandemic. He takes everything under control. He allows what he wants to allow. Because he is God. Let God be God. God doesn't create or cause suffering, sickness. Of course not. But he is under control. He is the Lord, and he can limit the evil of the world and say, stop it, that's enough, stop it, because he is the Lord, he's under control. There are seven seals, and they are being opened by the command of the Lamb. We read in chapter 6, verses 1 to 2, the first seal, the white horse, the rider, the horseman, is war. And a bow and a crown are given to him. The rider, the horseman, is the war. He came out conquering and to conquer. And he said, come. He's given authority, that's why the crown 
And this reminds us of King David and the plague. And it is prayer, the power of prayer and adoration that get the plague away. It is a visual way to explain why God allows these things to happen. The angels of Revelation say, come. They are not the one who cause the tragedies. They are the one who say, come. The first horse is white and it's the war. And he's given a bow and a crown. A bow means a war, but a distant war. It's not a great war. But the crown gives authority, means authority. The second horse is bright red, and it means slaughter. And this is not a distant war. This is a close war, a great war, a widespread war. And he's given a great sword, because it's a great war. The third horse is black, and it means hunger, and it's given a pair of scales. The fourth horse is pale green, and it means death, and he's meant to kill with sore famine and plague. Then it comes the fourth seal, that is martyrdom. On the altar, those who have been slaughtered for the word of God with a white robe. The sixth seal is the earthquake. The seventh seal, for angels who had been given power to damage earth and sea, another angel having the seal of the living God and stopping all destruction and damage of the earth. In front of all of these tragedies of the world, war, slaughter, hunger, earthquake, destruction, damage, the heavens say, no, it's enough, no more. There is a time that God says, no, that is enough. One of the biggest angels, only four are the biggest angels who sing holy, holy, holy in front of the throne of God. One of these four say, come. The two first horses and riders of Revelation, they are war. The first horse is white, like a distant war. It's given the bow and the crown. The second horse is not a distance war. It is the sword. And it is a war that affects us. It's a widespread, a serious, a great war. The third horse is black. And it's given as scales. All the scholars have identified the third horse as hunger. And it makes sense. Hunger comes after war. Hunger comes as a consequence, as a result of war. And the fourth horse is pale green horse. And it goes plague, death. And it makes sense. What comes after war is hunger. What comes after hunger is plague and death. God has refrained, stopped the horseman of plague and death. But now he has said, come, come. These four horses of Revelation are circumscribed 
in God's attempt to make a new earth. That is the purpose of God, to make everything new, to make a new earth, a new civilization. Because after the four horses and riders, what comes next is the millennium, thousand years of the reign of Christ on earth, the sovereignty of Christ for thousand years on earth. And it's not the parousia. It's not the end of the time. It's now. It's now here on earth. Christ for one thousand years will be king and reign again. It is not the new coming of Jesus at the end of time. No, not yet. After the seven seals, and there is more, the cups of anger, and then the trumpets, what comes next is the reign of Christ on earth. Chapter 6 of Revelation gives us the key to understand human history and everything that has occurred in the history of humanity. God teaches us the deepest understanding of everything that happens to us in our human history. We all see what happens in our world. Wars, hunger, famine, plagues, illnesses, in the book of Revelation, God reveals the deepest motive, reasons, meaning to understand what happened to us. That is why the book is named Revelations. God is revealing the meaning. God is telling us why these things occur, happen. Sometimes we are said that it is a test for the just, like in the book of Job. God is testing the job, the just, as God is testing Job. It may be a test for a person, a just, in this case Job, or for a society, a civilization, a generation that have turned back to God. When misfortunes occurred, it may be a test, but it may also, for some, be a punishment. God can make a generation holy through tests like purification. Not many societies can say we are just holy and this occurs because God is testing us. This happened with Job. Does this happen to us in the same way? Are we so holy and just as Job? We can go back through the human histories of this millennium. After the two world wars, after the Cold War, after the hunger of famine that came as a consequence of the wars, so many unnecessary wars, so many unnecessary wars, and you can name a few, I can name and give names to those politicians who caused the, those unnecessary wars. And these unnecessary wars were caused by hatred, greed, sick of power and ambitions. Just compare what happened in the Middle East. Now the plague. God is telling us something. There is a clear message we need to understand. We have not 
turned back to God. We have not repented. We have caused so much killing, unnecessary killing, torture. Our earth needs healing. Now it is a time of expiation and purification. Many in society can say, God does not matter. I can live without God. I don't need God. What comes now is a long time of tribulation. This will no end so quickly or so easily. But God is restoring everything in Christ. God is healing the broken hearted. God is restoring everything in Christ because the Lamb is the one who is worthy. Let God restore everything in Christ. Let God heal the whole world. And chapter 6 gives us the clue that the fourth horses of Revelation would come one after the other because there is control. There is an order. Now we are suffering from the plague. Before there was a distant war. After that distant war, a closer and widespread big war. After that, hunger and farming. Now plague. A widespread plague all over the world. We can have now sight of the fourth horseman of Revelation. This fourth horseman is just, just appearing, just making an appearing slightly, but it will be more dramatic in the years to come if we don't repent, if we don't turn to God. Now it is making a slight appearance with this widespread pandemic. The four seals give us a chronological order. And we have in this chapter 6 all details to be able to identify them. The text reveals that this rider has only made a slight appearance, this fourth rider, has shown his face but this will be worse in the coming years. Since this horse will stay in the world, trotting all over, coming and going year by year, the only one who can stop it is God. God can say, stop instead of come. And it is enough instead of come. Why will God do that? Take the example of David in the sacred scriptures. It's all over the scriptures. That's why <laughs> I brought this big Bible. It's a scholar Bible that was given to the church by John. John Smith brought me this to have it in a, in a good place in the presbytery. Why will God do that? Take the example of David. David built an altar to God. He repented. He offered his prayer and a contrite heart. David. If we don't turn to God with a purified and contrite heart, we can expect the fourth horse to trot all over the world for many years. Because the root of all is sinfulness. Our sins are the cause of these horses. God can stop it if we turn to him with a contrite heart as a society, as a civilization. Many innocent people are dying, suffering. They are not more sinful than those who were not affected. 
by this coronavirus. I say that again, not to be misunderstood. And at the beginning I said that I put myself in the shoes of those who have died, of those who are struggling, of those who are mourning and grieving the loss of a beloved one. What have I done to deserve this? Nothing. It's not your fault. You are not being punished for something wrong that you've done. You are not. Many innocent people are dying, suffering. They are not more sinful than those who were not affected. What we need is conversion and repentance as a society. That's why the third formation is a call to turn into God. It's a call to prayer. It's a call to repentance. This situation cannot be sorted out only with PPE or testing or lockdown or vaccination. All this help, of course it is, of course it does, of course it will help, but without a conversion to God and a purification of heart, all these measures, PPE, testing, lockdown, vaccine, are useless. Yeah, they are useless. Without turning to God, without conversion. These are four horses in Revelations. We have to get it over. We have to accept it. As our parent and grandparent accepted in the past the two world wars, we need to accept this reality and learn to inter interpret the signs of the times as it is stated in the Second Vatican Council. Gaudium et Spes. We need to speak about conversion to God. We need to speak about turning to God with a pure heart. And if we turn to God as a society, Christ will reign. Remember that the message of the Apocalypse is not of disaster. The message is of hope, of encouragement. There is a way out. I don't want anyone to say, oh, Father Sergio said this, that. That's why I, I'm repeating again the same idea. This situation cannot be sorted out only, only with PPE testing, lockdown, vaccine. All this help, of course it does. But without a conversion to God, a purification of heart, all these measures are useless. We need a worldwide conversion campaign to let Christ reign. Isn't it the message of so many Marian apparitions during times of war? How many times the Virgin Mary appeared? Pray for peace, repent, prayer, Prayer, repentance for peace in the world. How many times has God spoken to us? How many apparitions of the Virgin Mary asking for prayer and conversion? If we convert, perhaps, perhaps he will say, stop, it is enough. In this year 2020, he said, come. And the fourth rider has come and is trotting around the earth. The Lamb has the power and authority. In Christ we have, we find peace and healing. Peace is the gift of the risen Lord. This is a time of turning to God. This is a time of prayer. Conversion and prayer bring peace. This is the time of the Holy Spirit. Pray to the Holy Spirit for the conversion of the world, 
for peace and healing so that the Holy Spirit can make everything new. The power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, a new outpouring of the Holy Spirit can renew the face of the earth. And today is Ascension Day. Later I am saying the Mass on the Ascension. And it's a day of obligation. It's a day of love. So we can pray. God, Jesus has ascended into heaven. But he has not, he has not left us orphan. He has not left us desolate. He ascended into heaven, but he is with us. And he has sent the Holy Spirit to be our consoler, to be our, our strength, to comfort us in time of need. We need the Holy Spirit because it is through the working of the Holy Spirit that we can turn back to God. That's why today we say, come, Holy Spirit, come and renew the face of the earth and heal the whole world of this pandemic. This is a message of hope. This is a message of encouragement. This is the way we can interpret all that is happening now in the light of the scriptures. God loves us. The Holy Spirit will renew the face of the earth. All we need is to turn to God. He loves us so much and he fulfilled his promises. That is love, that is peace, and that is healing. And may Almighty God bless us all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This was our Thursday evening formation. Today, Ascension Day, 2020. God bless you. Next Thursday, we have our theme, that is the devotion of the Virgin Mary, that may raise us about pain. The strength of the devotion of the Virgin Mary. Help us to overcome all pain and suffering. God bless you.